The young woman was sitting on a chair in a room all alone. This is how she had spent most of her days since coming to live at the Covent. The Covent was located in a remote part of Cornwall in southern England. The only people she ever saw were the nuns who looked after her. They were good people and they had treated her well since her arrival. She had told the abbess of the Covent that she wished to repent her sins. She wanted to see a priest in order to make her confession. That morning, the nun bringing her breakfast had told her that today she was going to have a visitor. She had told her that a priest would be coming to see her in order for her to make her confession. She sat in her room waiting patiently for him to arrive. It seemed like an eternity before she eventually heard the door open. One of the nuns stood in the doorway. She turned to the priest who was standing behind her. Here she is, father, she said. The priest looked at the young woman. Suddenly, he put his hands over his eyes and started shouting, No, no, get me out of here now! The nun pulled the priest out of the room. The young woman could still hear him as he left the building. He was crying as though he was agonizing over something or someone. She was worried. What had happened to the priest? Why did he react like that when he saw her? She was thinking about what had gone wrong when she suddenly felt eyes on her. She looked at the window to her room. It was completely covered with men's faces. They seemed to be fighting with each other to get a better view of her. Each one pushing the other out of the way. It seemed like they were clamoring to get closer to her. Welcome back to SCP Exposed. Today we bring you Euclid class subject SCP-166. But before I go on, don't forget to subscribe to our channel so you won't miss out on any more SCP stories. SCP-166 appears to be a female human approximately 19 years of age. She is of average height and slender build. Medical and physiological analysis indicates several deviations from baseline human norms, including accelerated hair growth approximately 20 centimeters per month. She has a vulnerability to airborne particulate matter such as cigarette smoke and aerosols, both of which can induce symptoms similar to an acute asthma attack. As even the lightest clothing tends to cause pressure ulcers or bed sores within 45 minutes of constant wear, she is allowed to go nude for medical purposes. Garments and bed linens are to be made of long staple cotton and should be changed weekly. Due to SCP-166's many health issues, medical evaluations should be carried out at least once per week. Although it seems like she doesn't need human food to survive, she is able to consume it and does willingly. SCP-166 is noted for her unusual effect upon human males. Upon establishing visual contact with her, 100% of human males tested attempted immediate sexual contact, regardless of their normal sexual orientation. In approximately 70% of these test subjects, the impulse faded after being removed from her presence. In 30% of these cases, however, the desire turned into obsession, resulting in violent attempts to gain access to SCP-166. Class A amnestics were efficacious in 43% of these cases. The remainder required termination. Her effect on males causes her no small amount of distress, not least due to her desire to follow a monastic life based on the principles of chastity, poverty, and obedience. For this reason and others, contact between her and any human male is strictly prohibited. SCP-166 can be kept safely in a minimal security environment. At the moment, she is being housed in a standard Class B suite at Site-17 with the following alterations. The adjacent suite has been redesignated into a local observation post. Translucent acrylic panels have been placed in the approach corridor and staging area to prevent direct line of sight into the containment suite from the exterior hallway. Warning signs have been placed throughout the containment area indicating that no male personnel are permitted in the area. Male staff are forbidden from viewing or entering the direct vicinity of SCP-166. Violation of this order will result in immediate disciplinary review and possible termination. At least one female staff member must remain in an adjacent observation room at all times and maintain direct visual observation of SCP-166 through viewing slits or closed circuit television. In order to minimize the risk of accidental exposure, all cameras and windows shall be equipped with translucent filters with at least 50% exclusion of detail. No permanent record shall be kept of any photographic evidence of SCP-166's appearance. Reasonable requests for personal items and modifications to the containment suite may be granted upon approval by a level 4 or higher authority. To date, she has requested a copy of the Holy Bible, the Douay Reims Chalonaire Revision, this was granted. A Catholic Rosary, which was also granted. 
access to a Catholic priest for confession, mass, and other sacraments, which was denied. Various books and magazines, mostly religious in nature, this request has been granted pending a review and approval of contents. A telephone with which to contact the Abbess of a Covent in Cornwall, England. This has been granted. She is to be allowed one hour of telephone time a week to this phone number only. SCP-166 is generally content to remain in her quarters as long as she is provided with entertainment in the form of religious materials, books, television, and art supplies. In return for her cooperation in her own confinement, she is to be allowed a 12-hour excursion away from Site-17 to an adjacent uninhabited island no more than once per month. Limited Release Protocol 19-A is to be observed in these cases, with the added restriction that no male personnel are to be allowed within 500 meters of SCP-166 during transport, and no male personnel are to be allowed on the island during her stay. The Foundation originally retrieved SCP-166 from a covent in Cornwall, England. According to the nuns, she had originally been delivered to the covent by a person of indistinguishable features who claimed that she was the offspring of an elder creature of great power, and provided instructions for her care. All attempts to locate the mother have been unsuccessful to date. SCP-166 was raised by the nuns in a cloistered environment until a young man, Subject A, who sneaked into the covent to visit one of the novices, accidentally caught sight of her. Three days later, Subject A became violent and attacked the covent, attempting to gain access to SCP-166. Subject A proceeded to kill one nun and severely injure three others before being neutralized by force. A Foundation operative consulting with a local priest regarding an unrelated matter heard of the incident and proceeded to the scene. When he too became enamored, the operative immediately cut off contact, placed himself into confinement, and requested a female operative from command to take over the retrieval operation. Agent Beatrice Maddox made contact with the Mother Abbess shortly afterward, negotiating the transfer of SCP-166 to Foundation facilities for containment and research. The following is the text of a letter found in her suite, the origin of which is unknown. Dear daughter, I first met your mother when she was a girl. She had hooves for feet and starlight in her eyes. She was beautiful and natural, and I killed her with my own two hands. Eden isn't a place, it's a state of being. They wanted to take us back to it, but I stopped them. I took paradise away from us for a second time. I have never regretted my actions on that day except one, that when you first met me on that day, you saw your father put a bullet into the head of your mother. I make no excuses, only explanations. I hope you understand why I did what I did. I hope you forgive me. I love you. I wish I could have done more for you. The best I could do was leave you in the hands of kind and loving people and hope they would raise you in my place. From what I've seen, they did well. I'm sorry you couldn't stay with them. I'm sorry they've brought you to this place. I promise to do my best to make sure your stay here is pleasant. I promise to keep you safe. Happy 16th birthday, honey. It was signed, your father. The Foundation personnel have conducted much investigation into the whereabouts of the parents of the subject. To this date, they have been unable to determine any specific information. What do you think of that SCP case? Please leave your comments down below.